Just introduce again, I'm Richard um, uh, and I kind of manage the RTC in Glasgow, kind of all professional learning. And Laura, do you want to introduce yourself? Yep, hi everyone. Um, my name is I am a leader of Glasgow's Improvement Challenge and Apple Professional Learning Fantastic. So, yeah, we, we want to tell you about Glasgow's digital journey and how that journey itself is having an impact on uh, everyone within our, in our local authority, from pupils uh, to practitioners to families. Um, and really it starts with our vision. Our vision was very clear from the, the outset where we wanted to provide uh, digital equity for all our learners. We're trying to um, get 50,000 plus uh, iPads into Glasgow to help everybody. Um, and we needed the strategy for that and the strategy was and always is in schools in Glasgow about raising attainment and achievement for all our learners regardless of where they come from and what their backgrounds are. Um, it's about enhancing leadership for our staff. We understand that by building leadership within staff we will build leadership within our learners and we will also improve attainment and achievement. It's really important that our vision includes our families because our families are part of the triangle of support and the triangulation of evidence. So we support our families to be better able to support their children's learning and their development. Uh, there's lots of data out there about if you get family engagement as much as you possibly can and you raise family engagement, then we raise uh, pupil attainment. So it's incredibly important that we get families involved. And we make the best uses of, of we make the best use of our resources. Yes, our iPads are resources, yes, the apps within the iPads are resources, but actually the most important people uh, the, 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 the most important resource, sorry is the people themselves and that is our practitioners, that's our pupils and that's our families and we want to enhance them so the three bullet points before that one about resource really, really works. So from our vision comes our strategy for our RTC and we always start with listening to our colleagues' needs and wants and we, we listen to their needs and wants, we can begin to make a greater impact on their professional learning which will have a greater impact on our pupils' learning which will have a greater impact on our family engagement and support our families better. We provide online digital professional learning at least two days a week from COVID um, and it's been incredibly important to do that and Laura's going to speak about what she does. That's two days a week from the RTC point of view, at least two days a week. Uh, and we range opportunities for our digital leaders of learning, who every, there's one in every single school uh, and, that, and our RTC facilitators as well to gain the leadership skills so they, that can deliver not only training with their own settings but also to the wider school community. So again, we're helping practitioners so they can help pupils, so we can raise attainment achievement and so we can support families. And we're always reflect every point. We evaluate what's working and what isn't working so we can make sure that our impact is always strong and we always continue to look at future trends so we know what's coming next so we can continue to make that successful impact. So that's your vision, that's our strategy, and hopefully it'll become a little bit clearer as myself and Laura take you through what we've been doing in Glasgow. Okay, so as it's just said, it's all about strategy, um, and within school we have our digital learning strategy. One of the key themes that resonates throughout that is the empowerment of all to drive that innovation and investment in their own establishments. And across the city we have wonderful um, support mechanism and colleagues, our family, every single person who works within our community. And we'll get so within what we have Glasgow's Improved Challenge, which is funded by the Scottish Attainment Challenge, where we are striving to close up of related attainment gap. And this infograph from our most recent where it was highly poverty is accepted as a barrier of excellence and we were recognised for the professional learning that we were undertaking and colleagues in our establishments but also for that of data to evidence and impact and within we have a of ways that our colleagues are empowered and really support sustainable to enhancing high quality learning and schools and early year centres. Um, we love an acronym in Glasgow, so our sketch know all about our DLOs, our digital leader learning. And as you can see, um, right at the start of it is raising a payment and a payment for the learners we are working with supporting. And the hope is that in not to the distant future, that every teacher, every single support for learning, every one of our families are also DLOs, a digital leader of learning as well.
Um, so as you said, we do live in Ashton in Glasgow and the colleagues that I work primarily with at our challenge leaders of learning are CLOLs. Um, they come to our pedagogy team, our LOLs, our leaders of learning, and we in turn support them with um, promoting and um, sustaining high quality learning and teaching within their establishments. We support them also with that leadership of learning and being able to triangulate that evidence. Um, and within the last few years, because of the fantastic digital transformation that's happening within the city, we were keen to get as involved as possible to create that holistic vision and approach that all together. So as we said already, it's about enhancing that learning and teaching and also um, ensuring that our, our, our workers and colleagues are equipped with those digital skills to help improve those educational outcomes. And that's at the forefront of everything we do. It always comes back down to those learner outcomes and the families and young people and children that we work with. So as we know, um, in February, March time of this year, our lives changed um, quite dramatically. And as an authority, we thought about how we could continue that strive for excellence um, and support our colleagues, learners and families in as much way as possible. So as an authority, we came together to think about what professional learning we could offer to support our colleagues. Um, and we thought of the idea of running daily coffee break learning webinars, which were hosted um, for all of our colleagues to be in involved in and engage in. And even though we had a few technical issues at the very beginning, and I know Richard will, will support me with that, we got through it and we ran a fantastic amount of sessions. So as you can see, we had 1,364 members in the City Council webinar team, which the number today is ever growing. Um, we hosted seven Apple Teacher Mondays, as well as 25 Coffee Break Learning webinars. We obviously collated and collected the data in terms of feedback and looking at what our colleagues wanted. And these sessions couldn't have been possible without the amazing work and support of our DLOs and CLOs across the city. The sessions were very kind of short to the point, 30 minute sessions, but again, such high quality opportunities and experiences for everyone to get engaged in. And with that communication that we had with our colleagues, we were able to think about the journey that we would then go on. Okay, thanks Richard. Um, so we also thought about in terms of sustainability, we were, re we were well aware of our colleagues who were working within the hubs and were not possibly able to access some of um, the, the webinars as they took place live. So we were very grateful to host our own YouTube channel, which had all of the, the content recorded and equitable, equitably um, accessible for our colleagues. We also thought about in terms of our journey, what we wanted to do next. So we were very um, lucky to have rich dialogue with our colleagues to find what worked well, what we would need to revisit. And again, the, the high quality experiences that happened were something that came back very positively. Um, and that's what we thought about in terms of planning our journey for the future, which Richard will talk to you about in the next few slides. Okay. So as a work stream um, within Glasgow's Improvement Challenge, our key focus is on literacy and maths and numeracy. And we have two work streams, Literacy for All and Glasgow Counts. So as a team, we are using digital tools to support that teaching, learning and assessment. And it's fully embedded in our core training that our CLOs come along to. We also offer it as Universal Twilights and Probationer Training, which is for our newly qualified teachers. We offer a variety of digital enhancements clinics and twilights um, that gathered really incredibly positive feedback, um, linking in our key methodologies and approaches. And as a team, it has had such a positive impact on our own collaboration, workload and workflow. And in turn, we've been able to support schools um, with driving that forward. The Leaders of Learning team are also involved in creating content and hosting those Coffee Break webinars that we spoke about earlier, which was wonderful to be involved in. And within our authority, we are very lucky to have a variety of frameworks uh, for literacy, maths and numeracy and digital literacy and computing science that colleagues across the city have worked on and are continuously quality assuring. Um, but these frameworks are able to support colleagues um, within schools to really look at teaching and learning, to look at that progression and to look in at how those literacy and numeracy skills really support skills for life and how those digital tools can be used to support and enhance that pedagogical experience. So just a little example this week and particularly and in fact I'm diving off this afternoon to do a, another online um, session with um, our CLOs this afternoon. 
we are looking specifically at our literacy and our reading um, skills. So we tie in the key messages and approaches that we speak about in our core training and we look for different ways of how we can engage our learners using these digital tools. So, for example, this week where we're looking at our reading strategies, using inference skills, critical analysis, and also that creativity that is so important for our learners to develop as young individuals. Always at the heart of everything is our accessibility as well, so that all of our learners are having an equitable experience. And feedback from our CLOs has shown that this training and these sessions have had that impact that they have then been able to take back to their schools and have that sustainability and capacity model. Laura's kind of stories of during lockdown is where I'm going to continue on from and continue to tell you about Glasgow's journey, its digital journey and how it continues to have a, an impact and it begins, continues to be part of that positive story where we are supporting our pupils, our practitioners and, and our families. As schools had started back, we'd had a lot of time to reflect during lockdown. We'd time to reflect on the successes of the coffee morning webinars that Laura had spoke about that we'd worked on at the very beginning of them and and we'd also had time to understand more about the, the digital products that we'd had and our resources for people, our pupils and our families and if we had to get into micro isolations or potentially we'd have to go back into that blended learning or full remote learning, uh, we'd had time to think about that and how we would do it and get the strategy and that's been part of my role as the RTC manager but we've also had to think about if that doesn't happen that we continue to provide effective necessary digital learning. It's necessary for Glasgow based on the amount of numbers that we, we are given iPads to and how we want to use them as a, as a resource to improve attainment and achievement and it's really key and really crucial that we make this a success story and not just another piece of ICT so it's really crucial that we make that success story. As a school leader who's somebody who's done a very short secondment with the Scottish Government during lockdown, as somebody who sits on the Digital Strategy Group for Glasgow, who's someone who's just been seconded to do the RTC manager's job, it doesn't matter what I do, I always start with the first question is what do we need and what do what do our, our learners want and what do our practitioners need and what do they want? It's really important to listen to staff and take what they are saying in order to make improvements and enhancements. So to make an, the impact, we, we, we listened to teachers and what it was they wanted because they need a reason to come to professional learning opportunities. They really do. They, we call them sit-ins sometimes, which is a negative way, but that kind of kept in feeling, what's in this for me? Why am I here for this? Our teacher time is incredibly important, crucial, so we need to make it effective. There has to be something in it for them. So we, we created a poll using Microsoft Forms and we asked them what they wanted. And it, the highest one that came back was the Apple Teacher Monday because of the experience parts of it during lockdown, so we continued with it. It was a very successful format, as Laura has given the example from there, but we'd also had 100% deployment of every staff member in Glasgow having their iPad. This was accelerated during lockdown and over summer holidays, so we wanted to get it right. So all we did was we kind of kept the original Apple Teacher Monday format, just tweaking it ever so simply, uh, slightly. It's very simple, it's very informal, it's very relaxed. You come, you join the Teams meeting, you come with your iPad, you try certain things, we look at some of the skills development, you ask questions, you work with the, the, the presenter, uh, whether that's a DLO member or a, a, an RTC facilitator, and you ask them for little bits of help and little tips. We changed ever so slightly, we didn't just go through the skills, we, we showed them the kind of enhancements that's been made to the kind of Apple Teacher website, so uh, Apple Teachers in Actions, the 30 time saving tips. So we spent the vast majority going through the little different badges, um, but also showing them other little things. So there's an introductory session, and then we go through the badges, pages, keynotes, numbers, uh, iMovie, GarageBand, and we finish on Swift. That's for a six-week period, uh, approximately seven if we include the introductory one, and Swift at the end. Uh, we had 275 practitioners at them, that's approximately 40 each session. Uh, we had six different webinar leads, so the impact is we're building this, uh, um, practitioner knowledge, and we're also building leaders through allowing different members of our DLOG team or our RTC team to make uh, to be the leads on that. And again, as Laura was speaking about getting that feedback, that came to us again because that allows us to then uh, hear what people like, hear what people don't like, and then set the next amount of training which is coming up now. So really, really successful. The impact has been with the 275 practitioners that are better skilled, they are better prepared, and they have better knowledge of how to deliver effective uh, digital lessons. So to build on um, the Coffee Morning webinars, which went to Apple Teacher Mondays, um, and listening to that feedback from staff, 
yes, people wanted the new teachers who'd come into the deployment, who'd received their iPads, they wanted Apple Teacher. They felt as if that was a natural place to start. But other teachers who'd already done Apple Teacher training and wanted the next thing, we looked at what we could do with that. They wanted the next level. They wanted to raise attainment. They wanted to enhance leadership within their school. So individuals within their school settings would take forward leadership within their own classrooms, within their own departments. And they wanted to make the best use of their resources, whether that be the iPad or the people within their schools or their families. And again, that goes back to our vision paper. So again, our staff and our families and our pupils are our best resource. So we created Creative Classrooms. Creative Classrooms is a very similar format to Apple Teacher Mondays. It's half an hour sessions. It's come and try. Let's try these apps that are additional apps within the iPad, within our self-service, a bit like our own Glasgow uh, Sales uh, App Store. Yeah, we took them through a green screen. We took them through Teams. We took them through uh, Shobi, we took them through um, Seesaw, and there was a big demand for these learning management systems to begin with because of the fear of a potential another lockdown or micro-isolations or a kind of blended learning or remote learning. We also brought teachers to training for settings and clips and clocks and classrooms and books and maps and all these kind of introductory half an hour sessions. They're not hands-on, they're not, I'm going to show you what happens when we press this button. It is really here as an introductory session. It's now your responsibility to go work with your dealer, work with your RTC facilitator, try your own training. We point them, we signpost them to all the right places to go to. And again, this the staff survey that we, we presented to staff similar to the Apple teacher feedback was the same as this. They wanted this type of training. It was also to do with the 100% need for deployment, but also to move away from the skills base. We wanted teachers to become more innovative with the apps to maybe app smash, to maybe use two and three at a time, to collaborate, to share, to save them in OneDrive, to use them for assessment, to give feedback to families. So that was the reason for doing the creative classrooms and using that kind of format. Um, so in total, for the creative classrooms, very, very similar to Apple Teacher Monday, we had uh, eight weeks of the creative classroom um, webinars. We had 14 different webinar leads this time, and that's about building capacity for leadership. We had 323 attendees, that on average was 30 a night, and we had 210 evaluations, which again was giving us that really, really uh, valuable feedback that would tell us how we would shape and build our next professional learning offer, so the impact can be even greater, so the impact can be even better. So, so just to finish off on my last slide here, how do we measure the impact of our digital journey story? Well, I looked up the definition of impact and it comes with a marked an effect and an influence. Do I think that um, from following on from what Laura was speaking about, from lockdown and coffee morning webinars and doing our Apple Teacher Monday and now doing our creative classrooms, are we having an influence on staff professional development? Yes, we are. So we have listened to the feedback from practitioners and their needs and wants and we have provided the training for that through Apple Teacher Monday or our creative classrooms. We're looking at our attendance data and that is high I think 30 for creative classrooms and 40 for Apple teachers. In terms of where Scotland is and talking to other local authorities, talking to the Scottish Government, talking to the different facilities and different teams, those numbers seem quite high and we are quite comfortable with that. Um, and not if you had an actual live session, there was a bit of chat before that with um, uh, Ryan and Nick about people going to webinars in a different way now because of lockdown. I don't know if we would always get 30s and 40s in the room. Sometimes we get 2s and 3s. So there's a comfort around creating these webinars online and that's certainly working. Um, we're asking practitioners and webinar hosts all the time for feedback. Uh, we're asking practitioners about what they want during the sessions, at the end of the sessions. And we're also asking the webinar hosts for feedback. Did anyone come and say they want this or did anyone say they like that format? So again, we're using that feedback of the impact of the original webinar to then improve the the, 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 the webinars in the future that will be coming up in January and for, uh, onward into March and April and next year. We continue to carry on our own professional learning and looking at future trends because I said that at the start, it's incredibly important that we do that. So we're always checking in on our professional learning. Um, Brian has spoken about is anyone able to join any of the previous webinars this week? Uh, I haven't, Laura has, I know Leanne from our RTCs on this today, and she has, and again, we're asking people to do that so we can keep up to date future trends, so again, we can continue to have that very, very successful impact. And like all good practitioners and all good teachers, we continue to repeat the process because it's working really, really well, but when it needs improved and when it needs tweaked, we stop, we look at that, we look where we can enhance and where we can change things, and then we just keep doing that. So I think that's me finished, Ryan. I just want to say thank you very much for 
people who were listening and hopefully that, although it was really, really quick, gave you something that you could maybe go away and think about and think about what we're doing right. And if anyone would like to get in touch with us, uh, you can through these two Twitter feeds. We've got our DLOL feed and we've got our RTC feed, which is specific just to the kind of Apple aspect. And also that's myself and Laura's details. Any feedback is great. Anything you think we should be doing differently, anything you think we can improve on, please, 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 please get in touch. Okay. Richard, yeah, Richard, Laura, thank you both for that. It was really.